Hi, my friends. Welcome to Deep Six, the Deep State, my daily recitation of what's going on in the news and my opinions on it. Uh, <clears throat> it's getting to be D-Day for illegal immigrants. Uh, the caravan of illegals that originated in Honduras and rolled to Guatemala and rolled over the Mexican border and continued to move up Mexico and is still moving up toward the U.S. border is rapidly approaching. It swelled to over 100,000 largely children. And uh, by the time it reaches the border, with all the publicity it's getting, it could really swell to several thousand people, maybe even 10,000 or more. And that's emerging as really a tremendously important event in the history of illegal immigration. Uh, the answer is, what will happen at the U.S. border? Will the immigration uh, police, the ICE agents, round them up uh, and imprison them? And uh, if they do, will there be violence? Uh, will we have a spectacle of having to, uh, having to combat riots of people trying to get into the United States? What will Trump do? What will the ICE do? What will the Mexicans do? In the meantime, the journey to the north is being facilitated by the Mexican government and by uh, political candidates in Mexico. There's a presidential race going on there now. And the two front-running candidates have both condemned the U.S. government over immigration and, and spoken in support of the caravan. Um, this is going to be a major international episode and incident. Now, Trump has said that this is proof that we need the border wall, and he's damn right about that. Uh, we also need other stuff. We need a law that permits us to arrest minors and to ship them back to Mexico without their parents. Uh, we need uh, to expand our detention facilities. Uh, we also need to eliminate the catch and release policy, which Trump can do administratively, where you catch people and then you release them right back over the border. Uh, but this march, this caravan, is going to require strong measures and um, could easily get out of hand and could easily become a cause celeb both for the anti-immigration people and for the pro-immigration people and uh, really could be a flashpoint and a boiling point. So keep your eye on that. It's a very significant development. As it is, Trump has, is now building 100 more miles of wall. We have about 650 <laughs> that was built by Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton and extended by George W. Bush. Uh, but now they're all opposed to the wall now that Trump is pushing it. Uh, the wall is about 650 miles long. Um, the 100 miles would make it 750, and the total uh, border is about 1,600 miles. Um, so uh, this really could be a flashpoint. The other thing that's going on, which is fascinating, is that John Bolton's appointment as National Security Advisor is materially changing the negotiations with Iran and with Western Europe. Uh, before anybody's gone to the bargaining table, the concept that a tough SOB like Bolton, he's a nice guy personally, but tough on the issues, is about to take over, has sent shockwaves through the Western alliance. And, uh, the, and the result is that the Western allies, uh, Germany, France, and Britain, who helped negotiate the Iran agreement and normally would stand by and defend it, are now trying to appease the United States and calm down Trump so that he doesn't run out on the entire deal and snap the sanctions back into place. If Trump were to do that, the Allies would have virtually no alternative but to go along, because along with the sanctions that we would impose on anyone who does business with Iran, there would also perforce be secondary sanctions, which means anyone who does business with anyone who does business with Iran can't open a bank account, can't use the international banking system, can't have wire transfers, all kinds of stuff that make it almost impossible to stay in business. So the Western allies have no alternative but to follow us if we abandon the agreement and move to put the sanctions back. Now Trump has said there are three things you have to do for me to stay in this deal. One, which was the original demand of Netanyahu when he spoke to Congress, is don't have a sunset. Don't have a date at which the deal expires, which is an invitation to Iran to explode a bomb on that day. Uh, secondly, he says that we have to be much more vigilant and much tougher 
in applying the sanctions to development of intercontinental ballistic missiles. And that we have got to be as aggressive on those as stopping an atomic explosion. And finally, he says that it's very important uh, for us to pr demand that we be get the right to inspect military bases in Iran, particularly those locations which they have in the past used for their nuclear facilities. Right now, they can withhold permission to visit those sites, which is absurd. And the Europeans now are faced with knuckling under to Trump's conditions uh, and going along with them and demanding that they be inserted in the agreement or going along with our sanctions. Now, the Iranians are the only ones who can, of course, modify the deal to, to make that happen. But if the Western allies are going along with the United States, it's clear to Iran that sanctions will then be imposed. So it brings maximum pressure on the allies and then on Iran to concede to Trump's agenda. Not applied at the negotiating table yet, but just with the threat of John Bolton waiting in the wings. It's absolutely terrific. Now, on a less terrific note, last month and this month, uh, that is February and March, uh, for the first time, the number of murders in London exceeded the number in New York City. Uh, historically, New York City has had uh, up to 100 times more murders than London. London had very few murders, and New York had used to have 2,000 a year. Now New York is down to a little below 400, and London has gone up to an annual pace of about 300 a year, maybe 400. So uh, and this is entirely due to two things. I mean, the, the cuts in U.S. murders are due to Giuliani and Bloomberg and the great work that they did, and, uh, and Kelly, the police commissioner. But... The increase in London murders is because they have an Islamic mayor who is very friendly to, to immigrants and uh, who has stopped stop and frisk. Uh, so policemen are unable to stop someone and frisk them for weapons and has brought about a situation where the police are more afraid to crack down on illegal immigrants or search people because they're worried about getting into trouble. A familiar story in Western capitals, but now it's come to London. And it is so graphic that London, that used to always put New York down, they originally, years ago, never even armed their police. They just used clubs. Uh, now has to realize that their failure to curb illegal immigration and to let the police do their job is coming home to roost. Thanks very much for watching. And Tune in every day and share this widely because this is information you will not find anyplace else. Not that it can't be found, but nobody wants to talk about it, at least in the media. Thanks a lot for watching. Now, this video is sponsored by the Patriot Gold Group. You can have your choice. You can either lose 4% since the start of the year on the stock market, the Dow is down 4%, or make 4% a year, because since the first of the year, gold has gone up by 4%. Down 4, up 4. It's kind of your choice. Do you want to get into the gold market or not? And uh, eight-point swing between the two in the first two months of the year. And it's going to continue, because the reason that gold is going up in value is essentially that China is trying to switch the world off of the dollar and on to gold by all kinds of measures, including converting yuan into gold and uh, their currency. And that's going to continue. It's going to increase the demand for gold. And smart people should get on board and uh, ride that price increase all the way up. Thanks for watching. Call the Patriot Gold Group on this number or go to, the, or go to patriotgoldgroup.com. Thanks.